Hi everybody, this is Dr. Dan, and I wanted to talk about powering microcontrollers because this is a little problem that uh, some students have run into, and so I wanted to kind of talk about how to handle this. And so right here we have uh, a system set up. Uh, you can see I have my microcontroller, that's the Arduino Nano 33 IoT microcontroller. And what I would like to do is power this thing. And uh, my what I have going on down here is that I have an instrumentation amp, right? And you guys are familiar with instrumentation amp. They need plus and minus power, right? They don't have zero volts as one of the pins. It's plus and minus. And so we're using this voltage follower circuit down here to take a nine volt battery and split it into uh, minus 4.5 volts and plus 4.5 volts. And so the hope was then we could use the plus 4.5 volts to also power our uh, Arduino microcontroller. Unfortunately, uh, some students had run into problems and that did not work. And so I was initially confused because I've like I've done this before uh, for sure in getting a microcontroller power. So I'm going to walk you through uh, how to power these things and some tricks. So we have the Arduino Nano IoT. If we go to like the tech specs, it says it can be powered with 5 to 18 volts. And so that 4.5 is probably a little on the low side, but I think it should still work. Like I said, I've done this before and got it to work. Um, and so when you're working with this Nano and you're like programming it from your computer, you're usually giving it power through this USB plug, right? So you're, you've plugged it into USB, it's in, it's on, uh, it's working. Uh, and you're like, great, because the USB gives it approximately five volts of power. But then when you want to make it into a real device, it can't be plugged into your USB port all the time. So you, what you want to do is plug it into some sort of battery power, right? And like I said, it'd be nice if we use the same battery to power our instrumentation amp as our Arduino. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in a battery. I already have all this wired up. And we're going to try to run the same software and you're going to suddenly see that the nano doesn't work anymore like it, it doesn't seem to be doing anything i don't know if you can see in the video but even this light is like very faint right now so i'm going to go through and figure out what's going on with this okay and the way we're going to do this i have a, a lab view um, thing to kind of make some measurements here i have the measurement from the body the battery itself the plus and minus of the voltage follower so those should be plus and minus equal and opposite. And then I'm providing that plus power into the Arduino um, and then checking the Arduino by checking the 3.3 volt input. And so just to clarify what's going on, we'll look at the pinout of the Arduino real quick. I'll zoom in here. And so you can see that you can provide power in the USB port, but you can also provide power in this V, the ground and the VN, right? These are input power. So if I want to provide input power, then I don't need to power using the USB port anymore. And then once you provide power using this VN, there are some pins where you can also get the power out and check the power. So the main one I'm using is this 3.3 volt out. And I'm checking if it is actually 3.3 volts. And if it is, the Arduino is probably going to be fine and working. So that's what we're going to be looking at. I have put... Uh, the positive side of the voltage follower into VN. I've put kind of the zero volts into the ground and then the output this is where it says Arduino 3.3 volts. So let's go ahead and look what happens in these cases. Okay, so we're going to start with this configuration I already have where we have the nine volt going battery going to the voltage follower uh, and then using that to power the Arduino. So we'll hit run. Okay, you see from the battery, we have fine 8.5 volts, it's close to 9. Uh, voltage follower kind of was working, but you look at the Arduino power. It's like small, and then it jumps, and then it also, it, watch how the voltage follower voltage also changes. Like, so something is not working right here, right? It's not powering this uh, Nano 33 IoT uh, well. And so just to compare, I'm going to unplug the battery and I'm going to plug in the USB power. And we'll see, okay, obviously these are meaningless over here, 
but we'll see now okay we're getting 3.3 volts out of the arduino so that's how we know it's working when we see a good solid 3.3 volts there so what's going on okay and there's a couple things going on number one uh, when i got it working i actually used a different slightly different microcontroller it's this uh, Arduino Nano 33 BLE for Bluetooth low energy. And so it seems like there's not much difference. The IoT does have uh, some Wi-Fi capabilities that the BLE doesn't. But if I just uh, replace the IoT I'm making sure I get this in the right place, but I want to make sure I get all the pins lined up. So I just replace it with the BLE one, uh, and now we'll power this thing. Number one, I don't know if you can see, but the light is already much solider, and you can see it's working. Okay, so this explains why I was able to get this to work and some of my students weren't. It's because they were using the Nano IoT and I was using the Nano BLE. So my first lesson is if you want to do something like this, maybe just use the Nano BLE. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing is, okay, what if you have a Nano IoT and you want to use it because you want the Wi-Fi features or whatever? What can we do about that? So I wanted to explore a couple different options. And uh, so I have a couple, uh, a couple different things going on with some um, lithium, lithium polymer batteries. And so this is a single cell lithium polymer battery. It says 3.7 volts on it. That's kind of the nominal voltage. Once you charge it, it's up to closer to 4.1, 4.2 volts. So again, that's 4.2 volts is kind of what our nine volt battery is giving right now. Um, so I'm gonna see what the 4.2 volts will do as far as powering uh, the IoT. So I'm going to unpower this. I'm going to take off the um, the BLE. I'm going to place back in the IoT. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just stick this into the battery as it was before. And so you can see we're getting that 4.1 volts from the, the battery. Yeah, and so it's splitting it into, you know, two, plus and minus 2.7, and the Arduino is just not working at all. I mean, that's expected, because that's a really low voltage to power the Arduino, okay? But instead of this, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can power the Arduino by itself with this uh, 4.2 volts. So I'm putting the battery negative in the ground, the body battery positive in the VN. And now, again, these three don't are meaningless because we're not using them. But you can see the Arduino seems to be working, right? The Arduino seems to be outputting 3.3, a very steady 3.3 volts. So, and if you can even see this light, it is, um, it's bright green. So, all that to say, it seems like a a single cell lithium polymer battery can indeed power the Arduino by itself. So you should feel comfortable using that. It just seems that the voltage follower using a nine volt doesn't work. Okay, so if we tried this single cell, what about a double cell uh, lithium ion battery? So I have a double cell lithium ion battery here. Um, it is, you know, 7.4 volts again, more like 8.4 by the time it gets charged. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just plug these in instead of the single cell. Okay, and again, it's plugged in. It's providing, you know, eight something volts to the Arduino. The Arduino loves it. It, you know, has a steady output of 3.3 volts. But what if we use this on as input into our voltage divider, right? And see if that works. Maybe it's just a nine volt battery is weird and a LiPo battery will work instead. We'll try it. All 
Okay, so you see the battery is providing 8.36. Uh, the voltage follower is working fine. But again, the Arduino doesn't like this, this voltage follower feeding it. And again, this is just the IoT one. It seems like the BLE works. Uh, I don't really know the explanation for that. Um, the other thing we could do is, um, so, you know, the problem is, is we still want to be able to provide this instrumentation amp with plus and minus voltage, right? And so you can do that with a two cell lithium ion battery. And the way you can do that is by uh, just wiring one of the cells. So in this output, this output is for like full power, both cells. This output has basically, um, there's three pins. You know, one is in the middle of the two cells. So if I give it this configuration, if they're plugged in um, on the two ends, Right, that's going to provide the full the full uh, eight volts. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in to make sure that is true. Okay, same situation. So it's just like I had it plugged in before, but now instead I'm going to move uh, this wire over to the middle, my ground wire to the middle. And so now you're seeing I'm only getting power from one of the um, one of the cells. So what if I just used one of the cells? To then power my Arduino. And you can see that works, right? So I'm using one of the cells to power my Arduino. And what I can then do is not have to use a voltage follower at all because then I can also use the same thing to power the plus and minus of my instrumentation amp, right? If I wired it like this, the black wire is the ground, zero volts. The red wire is plus 4.2 volts. And the yellow wire, which I'm not connecting, is negative uh, 4.2 volts, right? And so I can use that, the red and yellow then to power my instrumentation amp without using a voltage follower. And so that's one way I could use a two cell battery to power both an instrumentation amp and an Arduino Nano IoT. Okay, so one last thing I want to do is, okay, that's a two cell, but I also have a three cell LiPo battery. This is kind of a big battery and they make smaller ones, but this one's big. And again, I'm just going to connect um, the three cells. So this will end up being like 12.6 volts when it's fully charged. And so that does fine on the Arduino itself, right? Again, same thing. But what we want to do is, can we run this through the voltage follower? So I'm going to go ahead and plug these into the battery, being very careful not to touch those wires. And plug this to feed the Arduino. And so what you can see is, okay, it should be 12.6 volts, but the, um, the DAC on the National Instruments Elvis board is limited to 10 volts, so it's maxing out. But you can see it's like half and half, plus and minus 6 volts. Um, but the Arduino is now working. Okay, so overall, when you're powering these things, right, think about what you need because what we found out is the Arduino IoT does not work with a 9 volt battery uh, if you're going to split it into plus and minus 2.5 volts. So your options are use either a two cell lithium polymer battery um, and use one cell. Um, to power the Arduino, and then you can use the plus and minus out of that. You can use a voltage follower with a three cell 12 volt battery, um, but that's starting to get to be a pretty big battery. Um, the other thing you can do is just go ahead and use the Nano BLE rather than the Nano uh, IoT. So I hope that was useful and saves you guys some time from messing around with this uh, on your own.